Hey everybody, welcome back to Double D Vintage Baseball Cards. My name is Dylan. I got back from the National the day before yesterday, um, Sunday. Travel was insane. Um, I hate traveling. I hate flying on planes more than anyone I know. I can't stand it. My stomach always like gets tight and it's just the worst. I can't stand it. But with all that said, it was the greatest freaking trip ever. The National was sick. And so how I want to go about doing this, sharing with you guys what I purchased over there, is I'm going to tell you, I'm going to do it in order of when I got the cards and tell the story of my trip as we go. I like looking at baseball cards. And when I got home, I want I wanted to look at my wall so bad. I wanted to put my new cards up on my wall. And so when I came home, I started scanning cards. And I think my wife thought I was going to be completely over cards the time I got back. And I actually thought that too. But when I got back, I was even more pumped up. Um, so I spent the day scanning my cards so I can, and entering them, putting how much I paid, my whole Excel collection. And then I put them on my wall. So the ones I didn't put on my wall, I'm going, I, I left the ones that I'm sharing in order. And I'm just going to tell stories along the way. And this episode consists of baseball cards that I purchased when I was drinking. And plenty of drinks, okay? The first night, I was on like, when we got back to the house after the show, I was on like 36 hours of staying up straight like I probably slept for maybe an hour out of all my flights total on the way I just couldn't sleep um you guys know how that goes and so after the national you know we obviously dude it's the first night you're all fired up and are are at the misfits house uh man a lot of us like to have a few adult beverages and a few too many sometimes. Well, we got George Diamond Yard staying with us. And he's like a dealer. Um, and he brought a whole bunch of cards. So I spent like, I think the first night alone, I spent like 1200 bucks on cards from him and Don. Don's Field of Dreams. Who had a card he brought specifically for me. But he had about three, I felt like 300 vintage slabs to look through too. So not only did I buy the one card that he brought for me that I saw on his video that was going to be an upgrade, so I washed that as a purchase, but he brought, but I bought one more card from him that fit my eye. Um, and the first night, like, I bought these cards, so let me just dive right in, and then I'm going to share, man, I just have a lot to share, a lot to say, and anyone who I don't touch during this video, um... Like all the guys in my house, I'm gonna mention every single one of them at some point. I'm I don't know how many videos long my national talk is gonna be, but I like to show cards in groups, and I like to put them with cards that I already own because that's how I like to show cards. Um, so as I come along, I'll be bringing those out, and a lot of gifts I got, I'm slabbing up in my slabs, and that's when I'm gonna talk about the gifts. Otherwise, I'll spend three hours literally on every gift I got because I got way too many gifts. I got way more gifts than cards I bought. I think I purchased around 10 vintage cards. I went two days without buying a single card. So I got some incredibly, incredibly rare, rare cards. And I cannot wait to share those, but I'm going to hold off and I'm doing research on all of them. And there are two players I collect from Japan. And they're just like the most incredible cards. And I couldn't tell you, like, they might be my all-time favorite cards in my collection when you add them with the ones I already have. Um, and then I have a huge pickup that I'm going to probably do a whole video on. And, uh, yeah, okay, so let's just get right into it. I'll share more as we go. So we're drinking, hanging out, and a card I picked up made a deal from George Diamond Yard. And I gave myself permission to bring this to the show after I purchased it because I didn't plan on buying this card. I just, for whatever reason, it's not my favorite card of all time. 
probably because there's two players on it and it's not just one. So I gave myself permission to bring this to the national every day in case I needed it for a trade or extra money. And also the fact that I bought this in the dark and I was drinking. I think it's beautiful, but I definitely, uh, I had some doubts on it, but the more I've had this in my hand and as I'm looking at it now, the more I've fallen in love with this card. So I don't know if I'm going to be sharing this or selling this, but this is the 1956 Topps Hank Aaron white back. A really, really nice example. So when I woke up the next day and like looked through my cards, um, I did well when I was drinking. Let's just say that. I mean, and it was dark. I mean, we were outside. We had lights. It wasn't like pitch black or anything. But even then, you know, you couldn't see every detail of the card. But when I woke up and this was in my stack, I was stoked. But yet I also realized it was the first day, like first night. And I only bought one card at the show that day, an $8 card, which is... Where is that baby? Well, which I will share later. <laughs> but this 56, Hank, it's beautiful. George hooked me up. I mean, I paid for this. Like, I didn't get this for free. I paid. Um, I looked later and just around comps for a regular five. But this is no regular five. It's beautiful. So, George, thank you for that. Um, I love it. I don't know if I'm going to list this or not. I have a whole bunch of cards to sell before I get to this, but I definitely going to be selling some cards. I brought a huge box of vintage cards and I only showed it to the guys in the house and I traded one of them away. And I'll share with you um, the card I got for that trade. And I rest of the time, I didn't bring that box anywhere with me. I didn't take it to the show. I didn't bust it out. I just decided I didn't want to deal with it. So I'm just going to bring them back in, you know, put them back on eBay. So this is the card that I traded for. I got this insane 1984 Topps Daryl Strawberry Topps Tiffany from Lou, Lou Rock TV. And I, I mean, I told him I wanted this card forever. He shared this on his um, channel ungraded he had it forever and then he sent it in to get graded and i had dibs on this card since then we came to an awesome trade i had a 1960 tops willie mays that i traded for at the national last year for a bunch of otani cards plus the guy gave me 20 bucks i traded him that 1960 card willie mays for this and some other tiffany cards that were raw I thought we both made out like bandits. He got a bigger card. I got some smaller cards and this bad boy here, a perfect trade. And we made that trade. I, I think I was sitting in the jacuzzi, like the final, like, okay. And then I, I looked at the, uh, his box of Tiffany's later. He said, just grab whatever you want. So I was grabbing all the leaders cards and, and like five base cards. And I will be slabbing those up and sharing them as I go. And they'll be slabbed up with Lou Rocks name on the slab or how i got them i'll come up with some kind of cool thing um so love that card well the first day the first moment we got picked up from the airport and i was treated like a king scott reindeer studios drove us everywhere i didn't have to do anything and all i mean eric Forleaf, huge giant shout out to eric the guy set up the place when we showed up to our house. It was like I was at a wedding. Everyone had a placemat, a place setting with a, a long letter to each of us. Gifts like you wouldn't believe. Um, absolutely insane. Every one of us got a Don Mattingly rookie card, 1984 tops, which I'm going to slap up and have all the info on there. Share that at a later date. Blew my mind. We were staying on Mattingly Row. I mean, the guy went all out, bought all of our food, cooked us food. Um, I can't thank Eric enough 
But right now, the story is going to be focusing on Scott, my driver for the whole week. Scott Ranger Studios, greatest artist ever. He gave me this at his house. So he picked this up and drew um, a vintage legacy and Jake legends never die was in the was in the car and i it was i would instantly smile from that moment on until i left the national um i did have a little moment where i missed i mean i was i got homesick two days of not finding a baseball card and not being able to talk to my wife because the reception was horrible and we're six hour difference you know i had to take a moment and go outside and walk way out really far to get reception and talk to my wife and just I just really really missed her I was homesick to be close to her it, it's really hard coming that far and being away that long but being with my friends and staying in the in a Airbnb with all my friends was the greatest thing ever it kept me it kept me like in the moment and I didn't have those moments by myself where I would get, you know, homesick. The only time I did was at the show that one day and I just had to go talk to my wife and just just hear her voice and uh, talk to her for a while. Because six, di six hours different time frames, it was really hard to communicate. But when I was at the house, I can't tell you guys, if you're going to go to a national, I really recommend you staying with a group of friends. It's like we're, it was like we were in high school and we were at a, a camp out for the weekend or college or any time like surf trips with your friends. It was incredible. Every night we had a blast. So right out of the gates, we went to Scott's house and I had a tour of his house, met his wife, Jen, and well, I, I don't want to mention their names, um, even though I just did. I won't mention his son's name in case he doesn't want that on the air but he got me an awesome gift and i got a tour of their beautiful house had the best time ever over there um just a magical home loving home so thank you scott and he gave me this gift insane baseball card autographed by reggie jackson i'm going to share this in a future video of course with my numerous other reggie autos and with all the teams he was on um in particular so let me just put that on my slab that drew vintage legacy who was in the car that day gave and sold and he gave me those ones um so love it so let me show you guys the 1957 tops i got from don's field of dreams to replace the one i have and this thing is a stunner of a baseball card absolute bonkers card Ted Williams, 1957 tops. I mean, dude, I I can't even begin to tell you how long I've been looking for this card, this well-centered with the eye appeal like this. The copy I have has incredible eye appeal like this, the image, but it's not as centered. This is in a five in the back. Really nice really really awesome card so thank you don me and don we really had a good time hanging out together the guy's like six six he's like andre the giant and when we took a photo together we literally looked like that movie twins with danny devito arnold schwarzenegger it's so good we had a great time hanging out together um sitting by the campfire talking story um talking life playing home run derby everything um it was a it was a pleasure for me to meet him he inspired me to start my youtube channel because he was on those videos talking about the greatest designs of all time with mike moynihan and george likewise those two guys are like my heroes as far as my inspiration to get on youtube to begin with so it was an honor to meet him and we had an absolute blast and i consider him a great friend now um, and same with George and Derek and Mike and Jason and Jim and Reindeer and Eric. Oh, man. Uh, I probably missed someone. In oh, Rick. <laughs> yeah, Rick, the old guy who uh, we'll got to watch Babe Ruth play. Uh, dude had the freaking best time. All right. Another pickup that's going to blow your guys' mind um, to me for my collection 
Yeah, I bought some tickets on this. I got two other tickets, but one in particular that is just absolutely insane. But this one I bought from George. And let me share it like this to talk about it a little bit. 1973 World Series Game 2 ticket. Let me tell you what's special about this. Besides how freaking insane it is with the athletics, colors, the A's. This is MVP. Reggie Jackson was MVP during 1973 World Series and 1973. But you know what? I, that's why I wanted this ticket. That's why I said, I got to have that ticket. And um, George pointed out, he didn't even think about that in the moment. His thought was telling me, hey, that's Mays' last hit. This game was Willie Mays' very last hit in baseball. Now, I have not looked that up to confirm George, but George is a very trustworthy man. Um, and I didn't buy it for that. I bought it for Reggie, Reggie, Reggie. But having this being Willie Mays' last hit, uh, I, it was freaking awesome. Um, uh, unbelievable. So I paid um, for this, this, this. I paid $1,000, I think, for these three items. So cut that up how you want. Um, so I was down a thousand bucks, like walking in the door at the national before even getting in the door. Um, but I didn't, like I said, the 57, I didn't count and the 56, I was willing to sell or trade if something, if I had to. Um, so there we go. I mean, this is going to be shared again in a future video. I am going to send that to PSA. I vowed never send anything again, but I have a couple tickets I want to send to PSA and a photograph, um, that I've had in a, for a long time. I want them slabbed up. I want to, I say, add value to it, but more I want to add um, the look. I want, I love labels. I love how they look graded and these aren't fitting. Actually, I haven't really checked. Maybe Zion will come out with a bigger one before I get this graded, but I think I'll send it in anyways, 25 bucks. Um, I just love that. Um, so yes, I, I am beyond excited to have this in my collection. One of my favorite things I purchased at the entire show. Um, this next card here from George Diamond Yard. Oh, before I go on, I got a gift from John Man Genie. Was, it was, I'm not going to share it in this video because it's going to get it special. It's going to have a special video because I like to share it with these other cards. It's an iconic rookie card that I have never owned, always wanted to own it, and it's the most valuable baseball card I have ever been given in my entire life. Blew my freaking mind. Um, the story behind it is freaking hilarious, but I'm not gonna go into that. I wanna talk to John to see if, you know, if he's okay with me sharing that part of it before I post this video but he he brought this card handed it to me we were eating hamburgers um and i just i just couldn't believe it like nobody gives gifts like this it, it just doesn't make sense this community is absolutely insane so i'm gonna share that in another time but i had to make that point because i know john's probably gonna watch this my first video back and it's not a long one um and i want him to know how much that that meant to me to have a card from his collection that I've seen him share numerous times on his channel. It's incredible. It's going on my wall. Um, literally right after I make the video instantly, I wanted to put it on my wall yesterday, but I thought I was going to do a video on it today, but I decided to change up the format. So I'm putting that thing on the wall after this video. Um, okay. This next card I bought, I have been looking for a centered copy that has good eye appeal for two years. On my watch list, I've watched every single one go. And there's a great story with this one. But this is the 1958 Tops. Let me do it sideways. Robert, Roberto Clemente. 1958 Tops. Roberto Clemente. Insane copy. Now let me tell you the story about this. 
So George had this in his, his actual PC. He wasn't going to sell it, but he had it in the box because he's a dealer as well. So he'll sell anything. And so happened that Don brought a Clemente 1958 Tops. That was a 6.5. Now, Don's had was more pack fresh, sharper corners, just a little bit sharper overall. But it wasn't perfectly centered top to bottom, but it was really nice. So if I wouldn't have, if he, if uh, George didn't have this, I would have made a play for Don's. But George bought his copy for 500 and something. And I bought this for 300, which is, I'm sure, over comps. Because this is, um, because the example of it. And he knows his stuff. And I'm willing to pay over comps. But he probably paid over comps for his 6.5 as well. But what we, it sparked a huge long two-hour conversation with George and I about the better deal, what's going to be worth more in the future, a higher graded copy. Now, I wouldn't consider 6.5. Like, the difference was 200 bucks, which I still thought was crazy to pay. The difference when you had them both in hand, 200 more dollars on iAppeal alone, not worth it. But on an investment standpoint, 200 more dollars for a grade two higher, I don't see that being crazy at all. That's not unreasonable. It's not till you get to the eights and nines that prices go 10,000 times higher. Like it doesn't even make sense in my brain. So that sparked a conversation with me and him that lasted into the nights. Cocktails are flowing and he has a completely different take on it than I do. And I still think he is wrong and I am right. And he thinks I am wrong and he is right. But regardless we both definitely agreed the fact that when you're buying for your personal collection, there's no wrong, there's no way that you're buying, when you're buying a lower graded card with eye appeal like this, that you're going to lose your shorts. You're not going to lose your pants. The more the argument was what cards are eights going to skyrocket like they did in the last three years into the future or will these i appeal fours go up on a higher percentage basis than those um so we just had a deep discussion and i'm going to do a turn back the clock with adam all about that conversation or more so that topic um and maybe we'll invite george on as well if he has time but i am freaking blessed to have this in my collection finally incredible looking Clemente 58. If you've ever looked for this card, everything about this card is hard to come by. The eye appeal, the color, the centering, all the above and finding it in a lower grade that I did, that I could afford that I didn't spend a million bucks on. Incredible. I am so freaking stoked to have that. It's never going anywhere. That's a forever card. It will never leave my collection. Whereas George bought that 6.5 and he sold his PC copy and he was thinking that other one was for his PC and then he put it up for sale. And then somebody else in the house bought it for more from him at a table. So huge story behind that. I'm not going to share that because it's his story. It was freaking hilarious. Um, just, just awesome stuff all around. Um, so next card, last card I'm going to share with you guys. Another one I bought, not dead centered, but it's a card I have always longed for. I've always wanted this card, but I've never hunted for it in particular. And it, and it was Don Field of Dreams, gave me a great price on this. Now, I didn't look up comps on anything until later. And, and so some things I overpaid on, some things I underpaid on when you look at comps. But I don't look at comps when I'm looking at the low grade stuff. Like you can look if you want a rough estimate on something, but in the end, I literally, I'll gladly pay 30%, $50 more on a $200 card or a hundred dollars more on a $200 card. If it fits my eye, because I don't freaking care about the stupid number because everyone we talked, every, we had great discussions about like George in all in paparazzi, John, like, resubbing cards and coming back so many different grades so many different times 
I'm all about the card, man. When I look at these guys, I literally don't look at the number. When I was hunting, I'd look at the card and then I'd look at the number and I'd pray it was low. And when it wasn't, I was like, dang it. And when it was, I celebrated. This card right here, it's just an incredible image and I've always wanted it. And that, and it, and it was a nice eye appeal. And it's the 1950 Bowman Phil Rizzuto the Scooter. From my New York Yankees, who you guys know, cats out of the bag, second favorite team. Anytime the Angels are out of it, Yankees are my number one. Of course, when the Angels are in it, like I want the Yankees to get crushed when they play the Angels. But other than that, Yankees, I love everything about the Yankees. As you can see, I bought that. From Rick Vintage Oddball Cards. And it has the Yank a Yankees stamp on the back. It was in Yankee Stadium. Um, at some point, whether it was on the wall or in someone's office, it was property of Yankee Stadium. Maybe it was even in a box. I don't know. But I that's what struck me about that. I'm going to share that in a future video. But back to Rizzuto. This thing is in a PSA 4. Just an awesome card an awesome image and i'm not buying every phil rizzuto card there is i'm not even buying every hank aaron card there is i'm going after certain cards when they strike me and like i said i spent two days at the national where i didn't even buy a card i couldn't find any tops that were centered my centered people you know i had our, like i was getting heckled so much like john mangini because i was like I only saw four top centered tops cards at the show last year and I bought them, but it was a joke, right? But in all reality, that's how hard they are to come by. If you walk the floor with me, you know, my eye, I was like, I just went zzz, 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 scan. And if one was centered, I'd pull it out. If it, you know, once it's centered, then I have to look at the image and then I would look at the grade. And if it was a nine, then obviously I skipped over it. I was like, yeah, I'm not paying nine prices. And yes, there were centered nines there. Um, but nines are exponentially more. And to me, a stupid way um, to have a safe bet. My safe bet is buying the low grades and the grade I appeal, paying an eighth of the price of a nine, knowing that I can't lose my shorts. And it looks incredible and it's for my PC. And in the future, my low grade will be worth more than any other copy in that grade. Let's just at least put it at that. Um, that's my opinion. Um, so if that's what I got for you guys, I want to share every card I got. Um, and I will in all the gifts, but it's going to take some time. Um, I was lucky to be able to squeeze this out. My wife went over to my mother-in-law's house and I got a little bit of a cough. So I'm trying to stay away. Um, it's early in the morning right now. So I snuck away and wanted to pop on. Um, so there you go. Okay. Can't wait to show you the rest. Can't wait to tell more stories about the National and talk about my friends and my experience. Shaka. Oh, yeah. Don't be influenced. Be inspired.